ahead and go to Philippians this morning. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11. Thank the Lord for all our visitors this morning. I knew we would have a lot of visitors today because I rarely preach on giving. I rarely do, but when I do, you always know the visitors are going to come and they're going to think all they do is these churches preach about giving. That's all they do. They just want your money. But um, hey, we love visitors anytime, and, and you all ask people here in the church. I don't preach about this every week, all right? It's pretty rare I say anything, but, you know, and actually, I'm preaching this message too, I guess you could say, kind of by request, all right? I've, I had more than one people say, you know, you ought to preach on that, and so I'm going to, and so here we go, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. This is Paul talking. He says, I know how, both how to be abased. I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Many times in the Bible you see the word communicate. It's talking about giving. All right, Talking about giving, contributing. Verse 15 now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full and having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I want you to notice that there are two very famous verses in here. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We hear that one all the time. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And I think it's interesting in the passage where he uses both those, you know, he's talking to them specifically about giving. They had given to him. Paul was a missionary. He was a, an evangelist, a preacher. And he would go and he would take the gospel to places. And there were churches that gave to, to that. They gave to the ministry of the gospel. They wanted people to be saved. And they knew if they could take care of his needs and provide for him that he would go and he would preach the gospel and people were going to get saved. And I want to talk this morning about why we should give. Why should I give? Okay, We pass that offering plate by every week. Why should I give? You know, Why does that church need my money? What's the point of putting anything in the offering plate? Why do I, why do I give? And I'm going to show you from the Bible exactly why we do it. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you too that the, the way we do it here is so biblical, it's not even funny. All right. It, you know, we, you hear me talk about tithing and it's going on. It's all over the internet. All right. It is all over the internet. We know everything on the internet's true that, you know, tithing is something that ceased with the Old Testament. And I'm going to deal with some of those things and I'm going to show you that actually tithing is different today in the New Testament. It is, it's a lot different, and I'm going to show you that the way we do it and the way churches are doing it is 100% biblical, and so let's go ahead and look at what the Bible has to say on this subject, but first off, one of the reasons you should give, it's a blessing to God's servants. And notice what Paul was saying, though, in those first verses, you know, he's, I'm not speaking respect of one, okay, as, as a pastor, I'm not up here encouraging you to give this morning because, you know, I've got this need and I have this want. Listen, I, but at the same time, I do enjoy the encouragement. When sp other people are contributing and helping and getting involved, it, it's kind of a motivator, isn't it? It, it, it? it motivates people. He says, I know how to be a base. I know how to abound. He knows how to do all, all that. You know, he can do all things. Through Christ was strengthened them. He, Paul was going to do what Paul needed to do. Paul was going to get the gospel to people no matter what he had to do. But having these people give towards that, it was a motivator for Paul. It was an encouragement. It showed that these people were behind him, that they were for him. It, he knew if they're giving their money to me, they're probably praying for me. And these things, they helped Paul. And he said, he said, you have well done in verse 14. You did communicate with my affliction. He's going through hard times, but yet these people are sacrificing and they're giving. 
And he mentioned how in the beginning, you know, no churches were communicating with him. Nobody was helping him but them. And their giving, it motivated him. And when you give, it is a blessing to God's servants. It's a motivator. It blesses me. It encourages me. Hey, these people, they care about this church enough. They're willing to give of their possessions to help with the ministry. It, tell, it tells me that, you know, I'm not in this thing alone. I mean, when people are willing to put their money where their mouth is, you know, it's serious. A lot of people will say, I'm for you. I support what you're doing. I think what you're doing is great, but that's as far as it goes. They'll give you the lip service. But when people are giving of their money, you know that it's real. You know that they really care, you know, and it get that giving, you know, it helps take care of the necessities. You know, he, he said you have, um, in verse, uh, 11 or in verse 12, he says, I know both how to be a base. I know how to abound everywhere in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. Paul had needs that he had. And these people, when they would give, it would help take care of those things. And it was, it was a huge motivator and you're giving, listen, there's necessities folks. All right. I hope you'll, I mean, if we could meet outside and it would still be church, we could go find a park somewhere and have service out there. But does anybody want to do that in the winter time? Okay. Does anybody want to do that in the heat of the summer? Hey, okay. you know, there's a lot of things that we, you know, ways that we could make it happen, but you know what? It's nice having a building. It's nice having a place that's ours, that we know that we can come. We don't have to worry about getting thrown out of it or other events being going on there. It's, it's I mean, it, you know, and thank God too. One thing you need to understand, we are very blessed in this church at the small amount of expense that we have for a building. What most people are paying for, uh, you know, rent and, or even just mortgage, what we are paying for what we have is wonderful. And I, I'm, and I thank God for that. I mean, that's, I mean, God did that for us and that that's a great blessing, but yet, you know what we do? We still have an electric bill. Okay. We can do, we could, we could meet in here without electricity, but I'd rather have electricity. You know, we could meet in here and not have water. Y'all could, you know, go an hour or two without using the bathroom, I think, but it's nice having the bathrooms. It's nice having those things. It's nice having the necessities. They are, they're, they're a blessing. And, you know, when, and you giving, it is, it's a motivator. Okay. You know, it's, it's exciting when we can, you know, do the things that we need to do. And it's depressing if we can't do the things that we need to do, if we're not able to pay our bills and, and if we're not able to, you know, if we're wondering, are we going to get foreclosed on? Listen, these things, they're not free folks. They, they cost money. And when you get, and so you should give cause it's, it's a blessing. It takes care of the necessities. It's a huge motivator. And when you give it get, make, gives you a part in the rewards that come with what's accomplished. Hey, look at verse 17. He said, Paul, when he's talking, he says, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Now, listen, I'll admit it. And we've, we've talked about this before. You know, one of the biggest expenses in a church is the pastor. Okay. The things that I have to do as a pastor, you know, it, it requires money. I need to be able to provide for my family. Okay, I, and the things that I need to do as a pastor, they take time. It's difficult. Listen, I've worked full time and pastored here, but I could do a lot more if all I did was pastor this church. It would be a lot easier. More, more could be accomplished if I did that. But you know what? My kids, I've got six of them, and they all want to eat every day. They all want to wear clothes every day, and their clothes, they wear out. They, they grow out of those clothes, and it's expensive Raising a family today, it, it just is, and it does, it, it requires money. But here's the thing, when I'm up here and I'm telling you, you all need to give so you can help me be full time, I'm not saying that, folks, really for me. Listen, I, I, I believe this is all in my heart. God is going to take care of the McMurtry family. God is going to provide for my needs. The McMurtry family is not going to go hungry. The McMurtry family is not going to go without clothes. We will have the things that we need. But here's the thing. I want those needs to be taken care of by you. You know why? Because I want you all to get the blessings that's going to come with taking care of me. God's going to reward, God is going to reward me for the things I do. And I want you to have part in that. And God is going to bless those who are being a blessing to me. And here's the thing, it might, if it's not you, it's going to be Walmart. And you know what? Walmart's doing just fine. Okay. Walmart, 
They are blessed good enough. Walmart stocks are going up right now, and I'm glad. I, I contribute to the stocks. That's how we pay for our vacation every year. And, you know, and they are. The stocks are going up. And I'm like, all right, that's good. God is blessing Walmart. But you know what? I would rather God bless you. And listen, God's going to take care of me one way or another. It's either going to be me working out at Walmart or it's going to be me working here. If I'm working here, then I'm going to be able to see more souls saved. I'm going to get more accomplished. And instead of Walmart getting blessed, you all will get blessed. So listen, I'm not, you know, you all, you can decide not to give. I'm going to keep on preaching the gospel. I'm going to keep on witnessing all I can, but I've got to take care of my family. If I don't do that, I'm worse than an infidel, the Bible teaches. I'm going to take care of my family. That's going to come first. And if I'm able to do that through the ministry, I can only do that through you all. The people that I, when I, when we go out knocking doors, nobody gives me money. Nobody, nobody gives me anything when I go give them the gospel. Nobody does that. You all are going to have to do that. That's up to you to do that. And listen, there's things that, that I can do as a pastor. Not everybody's going to be able to do, you know, not everybody can go to different parts of the world. That's why we like to support missionaries. We want to help contribute to getting you know, the gospel to other parts of the world that you and I can't go to. We can't travel there every week. We can't make those trips all the time. But if we contribute, we take part in the rewards that come from those things. We take part in the blessing. Not everyone can be the pastor. Okay? We can only have one pastor here. But if you are contributing and that's helping take care of my needs, do you all realize you're getting part in the blessings from what I do. And I want you to have that. I don't want Walmart to get it. You know, Walmart, you know, they can, they can go jump in a lake for all I care. Listen, Walmart, you know, they're going to get blessed enough from all the money I spend there from, you know, just, you know, buying the food and everything that I do for my family. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't want them taking care of my needs because I don't want them to get all the blessings. I would rather you have it. Walmart's not doing anything to get the gospel out. Walmart's not, they're not accomplishing anything in that area. They're not changing lives. Well, what is that? Saving money so we can live better. All right. Yeah, you know, that's just, that's just a slogan to make you feel good about spending your money there. All right. I'm going to get fired for saying all these things about Walmart, but, but uh, I'm for them as a company and everything. But listen, I would rather you all get the blessing and I believe that you would. And so listen, this isn't about me. My family is going to be taken care of either way. My bills are going to get taken care of either way. And somebody's going to get blessed. Either way, and it's either going to be Walmart or it's going to be you. I would rather it be you, and I, I, I believe that you would. And you know, one way or another, the job is going to get done. One way or another, you know, uh, we're going to get the gospel to people. One way or another, I'm going to find a way to get out and preach the gospel, win souls, not doors. But I want you all to get part in the blessing for that. That is, that is my desire. And that's what Paul was saying. Not because I desire a gift. Paul knew God was going to take care of him. Paul's not just looking for a gift. He wanted fruit to abound in your account. You all that come to my, that come to my church, you're, you're a part of my family spiritually. And I want God to bless you. I want all of you to be blessed. I want you to have rewards when you get to heaven. And I, and you all giving will help you in that area. Said, I'm going to be fine either way. I just want you all to have part in the blessings. And so if I have proved to be your pastor, I have every right. I'm going to say, this might scare you for a second, all right? But let me read some Bible to you. I have every right to a portion of your possessions. Ah, how can you say that? Well, I don't say that. The Bible says it. Turn, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. This is where I'm going to show you how... Biblical tithing still is, and how the way we collect tithes and offerings is 100% biblical. It says in verse 1, Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord, and are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Okay, right here what he's saying, he's like, I've, I've proved to you, that I'm an apostle. You all know me. You all seen what I have done. Okay. Now let me ask you, am I not your pastor? Do I not preach to you all? Okay. I, I have been pretty much everybody in here except visitors. I've been to every one of your homes. Okay. I mean, and listen, 
Man, don't take this the wrong way. Y'all know I don't get up here and talk about me very much, all right? But I'm doing the, I'm doing just doing what Paul did, okay? I mean, how many of you have been visited by me in the hospital before? All right? How many of you have been visited by me in the hospital? All right? How many of you have you uh, how many of you have had a funeral in your family or something that I've been to? I haven't been to any of your funerals, obviously. All right? I've been to those. Uh, you know, I mean, how many of you I've been to your house? How many of you have I talked to on the phone before or maybe gave counsel in an area? All right? Okay. Am I not your pastor? Okay. Now, if I am doing these things, okay, and these things are work, shouldn't you all owe me money? Now, don't get scared, all right? Don't, don't, don't get scared. I'm going somewhere with this, all right? Y'all, you know, if I, now, have I ever sent anybody a bill? For any of those things I've done. Have I ever done that? No, I haven't. I'm going to show you why here in a little bit. Okay? Verse 3, all right? I do all this so you can examine me. Paul says, My answer to them that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister or wife as well as other apostles and as the brethren of our Lord and Cephas? Or I only and Barnabas, have we not power to forbear working? Who goeth to warfare at any time at his own charges? Who planteth the vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say these things a man, or saith not the law the same also? Paul said, hey, do we not have right to the normal things of life? We, you know, now, Paul wasn't married. Paul didn't have any kids, but he's naming others. Like, you know, Cephas, Peter, he, had a, he has a wife. You know, the other apostles, they have wives and they have children. Do, they not, do, you know, do I not have the right to eat and to drink? Do I not have the right to a house, the things that you enjoy, a car? Listen, folks, we're Baptists. I didn't, I'm not Catholic. I didn't take a vow of poverty. All right? I, I did not do that. That is not a part of what we do. I have a right to these things. Okay, I have a right to eat. I should be able to go to a grocery store like everybody else and buy some food. I have that right, and, and I, I, should, I shouldn't have to you know, be celibate and just live by myself and not have a wife. I have no desire for that. Lord... Made me a man, all right? I, you know, I, I want a wife. I want kids. That's normal. And, you know, and, and he says, you know, who goeth a warfare at any time? We don't send our soldiers to go fight battles and not take care of their needs. They get paid, don't they? And why should I have to go and minister to people and spend my time, you know, doing what I do and not have my needs get taken care of? Okay, I, I had, you know, I should be able to have these things take care of. And then he goes on, he's saying the law teaches this also in verse 9, for it is written in the law of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen, or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of this hope. God wants us to even take care of the needs of animals. That we use. If you have an animal that you use for your benefit, you ought to feed it. Even a cat. All right. You know it, what? What does it accomplish? Well, it kills mice. I guess that's why we got one. My wife wanted to get rid of the mice, and I guess some companionship. You know, some of y'all are into that. You know, and loving your animals and dogs and all that. Well, listen. It's a living creature. If it's doing something for you. You ought to take care of it. Now, do you all think God take, cares more for dogs and cats and cows than he does for preachers? Listen, God, he's saying God didn't just put that in there for the animals, but for our sakes. If somebody is doing work for you, you ought to take care of their needs. Verse 11, if he have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Now, watch this. This is where it's going to start getting clear here. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things that we should not hinder the gospel of Christ. Now, many people will interpret this passage and say, yeah, Paul didn't get paid. You know, if you're anything like Paul, you're not going to get paid. But no, that's not what he's saying here. He's saying we've not used this power over you that other people have. What's that talking about? Well, how many of us ever had a plumber or an electrician come to your house to fix something? And what do those people do after they come and they fix something? They send you a bill, don't they? And you are required to pay it. You have, you have to pay it. You owe them that money. 
When you go to a mechanic, whether it's a mechanic or a doctor, what do they do? Listen, you're dying. I mean, you're, you're dying. You have a car wreck and they go and they take you to the hospital and some doctor, you know, he works on you and he saves your life. And what does he do? He sends you a big, huge bill, doesn't he? You know, you, you, yeah, you, apparently you owe those thousands of dollars. You know, you, you use that room for four hours and you now owe them $4,000 and, you know, and, and they do, they, they use that power over you, don't they? And tell you, Hey, you have to pay this. Why? Because we did this for you and they've got their method of pricing things. Listen, everybody does that, but do we do that here? Has anybody ever gotten a bill for anything I've ever done for them? No. I've never even heard. Well, I have heard of some churches. They, you know, they do charge for different things. So I guess I can't say no churches. Yeah, some churches do that. We don't do that, okay? If you go to this church, if you want to get married here, if you're a member, we're not going to charge you to rent the building. You know, if, if you die and you have a funeral here, we're not going to charge you for that. Now, the funeral homes... They've paid me before when I've preached people's funerals, but I have never charged anyone for preaching a funeral. If the funeral home wants to give me money, you know, that's fine, but I, I would not do that. I've never charged anyone for anything that I have done. Why? I have a right to, but I've not used that power because I don't want the gospel to be hindered. I don't want anybody to ever not ask me to come do something for them because they're worried about paying me. Listen, we want things to get done. And listen, that's why I don't, I'm worried about this. I don't want you to take this the wrong way. Folks, I love pastoring. That's what God called me to do. That is my life. I love it. You know, if you die, you better let me do your funeral. All right. You know, if I, you know, if, if you are in the hospital, my feelings are going to get hurt. If you don't let me know, so I don't, you know, I can't come over and pray for you. If you've got a need, if you've got, listen, I'm going to be insulted if you need marriage counseling and you go pay some, you know, quack out there, you know, that's going to charge you a hundred dollars an hour to just sit there and say, how do you feel about that? You know, how do you feel about that? And then you know what he's going to do? You know what he's going to do after he charged you $100 an hour for that? He's going to write you up a prescription. And you know, this is why you feel bad. You know, you, you've got this amount. And he's going to dope you up on medication. And then he's going to get an, that $100 an hour plus a kickback from the pharmaceutical company. And none of your problems got solved. Nothing got fixed. Nothing has gotten changed. You've just now been getting a, given a pill to make you feel better. And if you're, if you do, if you go to somebody like that and pay them when I'm here willing to do it for free and I won't dope you up, I don't get any kickbacks for it, I'm going to be insulted. All right. So, you know, don't do that. Listen, if you need me, call me, people. All right. That's why I'm here. I'm getting paid some. I need to earn it. I need to, I need to, I need to be doing these things. All right. Don't anybody take this the wrong way and act like I don't want to do it. And, and if I do these things for you, don't you try to pay me. That's not how that works. I'm going to show you how it works here in a minute. All right. If you do, if you need something and you call me and I come over and I help you, don't give me any money because if you do, I might expect it the next time. All right. Don't, don't do that. All right. That's not how this works. Okay. We don't use that power. We suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Verse 13. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are, are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. That's what I'm supposed to be living off of is what we accumulate for preaching the gospel. And once again, nobody out there has given us anything. It comes from in here. It comes from you people. Verse 15, but I have used none of these things. Neither have I written these things that that it should be so done unto me. Okay, I'm not preaching this, so it will be done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glorying void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. I like that. Folks, I, I can't do anything else. All right, I don't want to do anything else. Do you all think I like that job out at Walmart, working in the cold, order filling, stacking boxes? Listen, this is what I want to do, folks. I, I, this is this is what God has called me to do. I, I'm 36 years old, people. I'm 36 years old, and I still weigh the same thing I weighed when I got married. That's not fair. I should be struggling with weight right now. 
But you know what? They worked me like a slave out there, and I'm able to, I'm able to keep my weight down. You know what I had for breakfast this morning? I had two donuts and a Dr. Pepper. And I'm not putting on weight for it because they, they worked me like a Hebrew slave out there. I should be struggling with these things. I should be worried about what diet I'm going to go on, things like that. But you know what? You know, my wife's glad. I guess I'm not having that problem. But listen, you know, I, this, is, this is what I want to do. All right? This is what God has called me to do. This is, what I, this is what I love to do. And I don't want anybody to think that, you know, I'm not doing this, you know, uh, for filthy lucre's sake. I'm, I'm, doing, I, I'm doing this of a ready mind. How many, who all in here called me before we moved out here and asked me to come start a church in Rock Falls? Anybody? Nobody did, did they? Y'all didn't know me. Now, I know some of you have prayed, but nobody prayed for Tommy McMurtry by name. Okay? I know there were some of you, when we came out, you talked about how you know, you're praying and, and you know, God would do something like that. Okay? And you know what? God heard and God sent me, but you, know, you, didn't, you didn't ask me. I did this willingly. Okay? I'm doing this because I want to do it. This, this, is what, this is what God has called me to do. And so, uh, you know, no, uh, go to Hebrews chapter 7. So now how do we go about collect, you know, collecting? How do we go about getting it? What about the tithe? Well, right here in that passage, those passages we look at, Paul was saying that he had every right that, to charge them for the things they do. Everybody else has that power. The plumbers, the electricians, the mechanics, the doctors, they all have that power over us. And we all deal with it all the time. You'll get evidence of that tomorrow in your mail probably from somebody that's using their power over you because if they do a service for you, you owe them money. And we, but we don't do that here. We don't charge people for things. That's not how it works. So what about the tithe? Paul didn't want to be a bill collector. I don't want to be a bill collector. I have no desire to do that. But Hebrews chapter 7, verse 5, because people like to talk about, you know, you're never commanded to tithe in the New Testament. And the only time you ever really see tithing mentioned in the New Testament is you see people bragging about it in the Gospels, how they give tithes of all. But then in Hebrews 7, it, ta- it's, it talks about tithe, but it was talking about when it was done in the Old Testament. But I want you to notice something, because I'm going to show you that, yes, it was different in the Old Testament. It was different than what we do today, but yet I still believe it's, uh, tithing is biblical. It says in Hebrews 7, verse 5, "...and verily they that are the sons of Levi who receive the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham." Notice, you know how they did tithing in the Old Testament? They took it. They owed it. It was required of them. It was the law. Is it a law in America that you tithe? Okay. Has any of us here, have, have we made it a law that you tithe? Have we enforced that on anybody? Have we checked anybody's financial records? Has anybody got audited by the church? All right, have, have we done that? You know, are you all okay with the government doing it? You're all okay with the stinking IRS, you know, messing with your finances? Have we done that to anybody? Have we forcibly taken your tithe? Have I stood anybody up in church and threatened to throw them out because they hadn't tithed? Have we done that to anybody? Listen, in the Old Testament, they took tithes. Why? Because the people owed it. Okay? And, but now, we do what we call a free will offering. What does it say in the Bible? The Bible says, uh, every man as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Does anybody in here pay your bills cheerfully? Does anybody enjoy, you know, that's your favorite time of the month or the week, whenever you do it, to pay the bills? Okay, no, you know, nobody does that. And you know what? God doesn't want giving to be like that. Okay? Nobody in here is forced to give. Nobody, nobody has ever been forced to give. You do it of your own free will. We do not demand it. We do not require it. We do not enforce it. We do not take it. Okay? We're not the, we're not the IRS. We don't do any of those things. It is, it's all, it's all free will. And so that when it comes to, Okay, well, still, that doesn't require tithe. All right, but here's the thing. Bible says, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. So what is sparingly? Well, what was always the minimum 
throughout the Bible, even before the law, we see Abraham giving tithes. Even before the law, it was always a tenth. That was always how they did it. I believe that tithing is what we would call sowing sparingly. Yeah, well, you know, you got these preachers going around saying, you know, you're robbing God if you don't tithe. And you know what? I think that's true because if you're not giving and I'm doing the work, then isn't somebody getting robbed? If you were a plumber and you went and did a bunch of work for somebody and they didn't pay you, would you not say they robbed me? But here's the thing. The Bible doesn't say that I'm getting robbed. It says God's getting robbed. Now, why is that? Because listen, once again, either way, folks, God's going to take care of me. Either way, whether you give or not, God is going to take care of me. But is God? Get, but if you're not giving, then God has to take care of me another way. You are robbing God. You're not robbing Liberty Baptist Church. You're not robbing me. You're robbing God. God is going to take care of me one way or the other. And you do. And just like you, when you've gotten ripped off by people before, you still had obligations that you had, didn't you? And you found that you had to find another way. You had to sacrifice something else so you could take care of that obligation. God is obligated to take care of me. And God want, and God is supposed to take care of me through you all. And if you hold back, you rob God, and then God, he, he's, he'll find another way to take care of me. But you're, so you're, once again, you're not robbing me. You're robbing God. And so, you know, you know, how many in here you know, think that you have to go to church to get to heaven? Right? Do we think that? You know, so then why do you come? You know, why do you come? You do it out of love. You do it in the Spirit. And I tithe because I want to. Nobody makes me do it. Nobody's checking up on me. Nobody's required of me. Nobody's auditing me. Nobody makes me do it. And you know what? Nobody can stop me from doing it either. Nobody can stop me. And I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed. I'm ashamed of everything I do according to the flesh. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. But the things that I do in the Spirit, okay, I don't have to be ashamed of those. I'm not ashamed of anything that I do in the spirit. If I had to be forced to take my tithe, if you know forced to give my tithe, there's you know there's no glory in that. But when you do it willingly, when you do it cheerfully, when you do it out of love, that is when God is pleased and you will please God with your sacrifice of faith. Go back to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 18, look what it says. It says, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. It was a sacrifice. It pleased God. God noticed it. It was an odor. It was a sweet smell. It made God feel good when he saw them sacrifice and they gave. This was something that it did. It pleased God. That sacrifice of faith, it does. It pleases God. And no one... Mind sacrificing for someone or something that they love. We do it all the time. And when you love God, you're not going to mind sacrificing a little bit. You're not going to mind doing without something. Yeah, you might have to go to the cheaper cable package if you start giving your tithe. You know, you might have to drive, you know, a cheaper car or, you know, whatever. You might have to sacrifice some of the things that we just, you know, are just necessities today. You might have to get a dumb phone instead of a smartphone, you know, and, and I'm sure the Lord will give you a crown in heaven if you have to do that, you know, if, if, if that's how you think. But listen, it's acceptable. You know, it's pleasing to God when you do that. And we ought, we ought to do that. If tithing was a legal requirement, this is, once again, it was a legal requirement in the Old Testament. This proves it's different today. Yeah, fine. It's not a legal requirement. Yes, nobody's making you do it. But look what it says. Turn over to Galatians chapter 3. I want to show you something here. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11. Look what it says. It says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. If you all are giving your tithe according to the law, God's not pleased with you. You cannot be justified by the law in the sight of God. It can't be done. But look at this. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. The law is not of faith. 
And it said before, the just shall live by faith. The Bible teaches without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if it was a legal requirement that was enforced to get you to give, then no faith is involved, is it? There's no, there's no faith. God is not pleased. But when you do it because you want to, when you do it out of love for God, when you do it when no one's making you, you're doing that of faith. And that's when you please God. That's what a just person does. The just shall live by faith. That's what the Bible teaches. And so if it, yeah, yeah, fine. Tithing is not a part of, yeah, it's not a part of the law today. I'll admit that. Nobody here can make you do it. I'm not going to make you do it. But it's very clear in the Bible that God is pleased when we give. God is pleased when we sacrifice. If you want to know how much that is, I don't see how you can go less than a tenth. I, I really don't see that anywhere. If you want to do, you know, a twentieth, all right, you know, if that's what the Holy Spirit leads. Uh, but, man, what if you sow really sparingly? You know, I, I'd rather sow bountifully, people. I would rather, you know, err the other direction. But if you are, if you're tithing according to the law, you're not pleasing God. Then look at verse 19. And so we all know, we all know this verse, but remember when Paul said this, he was talking to people who had given, people who had sacrificed. And he said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your need. Now, this does not mean you'll be rich. Okay, this isn't name it and claim it. This isn't give me $1,000 and God's going to give you $10,000. We don't preach that here. You don't see that anywhere in the Bible. But he'll provide for all your need. Okay? Now, think about this. The richest people in the world, their needs aren't taken care of, are they? Why is it that so many rich people are miserable? Why is it so many rich people are on prescription drugs and even illegal drugs? Why is it so many rich people commit suicide? And become alcoholics. You know why? Because their needs aren't being met. Their real needs. Their spiritual needs. Their their emotional needs. Those needs aren't being met. And these people are miserable. And we all, it's like we all, we fall for the world. We fall for all the advertisements. They convince us that we need all these things. They always convince us you deserve all these things. I mean, I don't have that. Yeah, I deserve a vacation in the Caribbean on one of these luxury cruises. I, why aren't I getting that? God's not providing for my need. You don't, you don't need that, but advertisers tell you you do, and you fall for it, and yet there's all these people that they have all these things, and they're still miserable. You know why? God is not providing for them. I don't care how big their house is. I don't care how nice their car is. I don't know how much money, care how much money they have. God's not providing for their need. If you, we all think we need these things because they'll make us happy, but we find out... You know, we can be happy without those things. Paul was able to be happy, he mentioned earlier in the chapter, without those things. You know, he knew how to be abased and how to abound. And so, you know, notice how God supplies our needs according to his riches in glory. And if God is so rich, why does he need our money? Listen, if God's so rich, you know, God can take care of the past this way. That. Yes, God can do that. There's all kinds of ways God could provide for me. I could find a lottery ticket. You know, I, I don't play, so that's not going to happen that way. You know, uh, somebody could do something to me, and I could sue somebody. Uh, somebody could die and leave me a bunch of money. I don't know who that's going to be, but you know, I mean, you know, those things can happen. God could, yeah, if God wants to do, that, He can do. It. He could make a plane drop a bunch of money from the sky. I, mean, you know, I. But here's the thing: God wants to bless you. God, God wants to do something in your life and God doesn't need your money, but you need rewards and God wants you to have them. He wants you to be able to enjoy those eternal rewards. And when you give, it will, it will help you accumulate rewards. You will be glad you did it when you get to heaven. And so you know, why should I give folks what we're doing here? We talked about this morning in Sunday school. We're getting, we're seeing people saved. We are changing the eternal destination in the lives of people. There are people that are going to go to heaven for eternity instead of hell for all eternity. I think what we do here is worth it. I think it's more important. If you want to give to other charities and things out there, that's fine. But I think what we do here is better. And when, and you, do, when you give, folks, it's a motivator. There's things that I can do that you can't do. But you know what? i got to provide for my family too. 
And I'm going to do it one way or another. It's going to get done. But if it can be done through you, you all can be, you all can be blessed. Your stocks in heaven can be going up instead of Walmart's. You know, who, who cares if they make another billion dollars? I don't, I don't care about that. I want, I want you to be blessed. And so I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll take part in the giving. It's worth it. It, it is. It's worth it. And so with that, let's all stand together.